CMQ. I don't know about you, but I'm extremely excited for these Apple Vision Pro headsets. I think the fact that they're pricing at $3,500 is actually really smart. And I'll explain why in this video, using some important ideas from psychology that you can use to your advantage as a long-term investor. And here it is. Wait, what the hell? What's he doing here? Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. Hey, what's up, everybody? Want to just briefly check in about this Apple news because there's a really good multidisciplinary lesson here that I was reminded of, and I want to pull out the old Sealed in the Influence, which was a book that I actually read before I knew who Charlie Munger was, but it was just one of the many reasons that I became a big Charlie Munger fan because he had so enthusiastically recommended the book. And in fact, after he read the book, he sent Cialdini a share of Berkshire Hathaway stock, which is now worth a lot more than it was when he gave it to him. The Vision Pro headset is retailing at nearly $3,500 before tax. People are saying, you know, it's inflation, what's Apple doing? Like, no thanks, I get it. But what people are overlooking, and this is where it helps to be multidisciplinary, to know the big ideas from all the big disciplines, and especially to understand the big ones from psychology, you can see exactly what Apple's doing and how Apple, and this is just one of many ways that Apple's able to use psychological principles to create what I would call a Lollapalooza effect. I wanna to read to you from this book about the contrast principle and tell me if this doesn't pertain to the Vision Pro. There is a principle in human perception called the contrast principle that affects the way we see the difference between two things that are presented one after another. Simply put, if the second item is fairly different from the first, we will tend to see it more different than it actually is. So if we lift the light object first and then lift the heavy object, we will estimate the second object to be heavier than if we had lifted it without first trying the light one. The contrast principle is well established and applies to all sorts of perceptions besides weight. If we are talking to a beautiful woman at a cocktail party and are then joined by an unattractive one, wow, what year was this written? <laughs> this is definitely not, you would never hear this in a book now. This was uh, 1984. Different time. We believe. We believe. Studies done on the contrast principle at Arizona State and Montana State Universities suggest that we may be less satisfied with the physical attractiveness of our own lovers because of the way the popular media bombard us with examples of unrealistically attractive models. Unrealistic. <laughs> I only date tens, buddy. Be assured that the nice little weapon of influence provided by the contrast principle does not go unexploited. The great advantage of this principle is not only that it works, but also that it is virtually undetectable. Those who employ it can cash in on its influence without any appearance of having structured the situation in their favor. Retail clothers are a good example. Suppose a man enters a fashionable men's store and says he wants to buy a three-piece suit and a sweater. If you were the salesperson, which would you show him first to make him likely to spend the most money? Clothing stores instruct their sales personnel to sell the costly item first. Common sense might suggest the reverse. If a man has just spent a lot of money to purchase a suit, he may be reluctant to spend very much more on the purchase of a sweater. But the clothers know better. They behave in accordance with what the contrast principle would suggest. Sell the suit first, because when it comes time to look at sweaters, even expensive ones, the prices will not seem as high in comparison. A man might balk at the idea of spending $95 for a sweater, but if he has just bought a $495 suit, a $95 sweater does not seem expensive. The same principle applies to a man who wishes to buy the accessories, like a shirt or shoes or belt, to go along with his new suit. Contrary to the common sense view, the evidence supports the contrast principle prediction. You know, and this is not just about these this headset. I mean, think about when you go and buy a new iPhone. The cases aren't cheap, but they don't seem that expensive when you just spent what you spent on a new iPhone. Similarly with Apple Care. You know, you just bought a, a laptop, maybe it's you know worth two thousand dollars, and then they ask you if you want to do Apple Care. Apple Care is not cheap, but it seems really cheap in that moment because it's the contrast principle. This is not only what Apple's doing here, in my opinion. Apple is seen worldwide as a luxury brand. It's a premium brand, and that's by design. That allows Apple to charge premium prices, to have the aesthetic and be cool and be perceived as fashionable. You might not ever use this headset, but people are gonna remember how much it costs. Furthermore, I'll add this. When and if Apple has new generations of this headset, they likely won't be that expensive, or at least there will be variations that are not, and consumers will feel like they're getting real value because their perception of the product will be anchored at $3,500. I'm actually making my edits to this video right now, and I thought of another example here where this makes a lot of sense. 
the people that you see and hear of using the Vision Pro initially, the early adopters, will more than likely all be wealthy, well-to-do, affluent people. And that tends to draw a crowd in itself because typically people like to imitate the socioeconomic group above them. Apple is doing what Apple does best, which is, you know, creating not just incredible products that are ahead of the game and top tier, but they're positioning their brand and continuing to position the brand as a luxury premium product that is worth premium prices. And that's very powerful. 